So what's all the hype around Scrum? It's not so popular just because it's been used by many major tech companies like Adobe, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Yahoo, for example. So what is Scrum? Scrum be interpreted in many different ways, and you can always check the official definition from the Scrum guide. But I just want to show you my favorite definition of Scrum from my personal experience. I just have three of them. So first one, it's iterative development or breaking a project into smaller chunks, starting with the most impactful and valuable chunks first. It's a software development method where my developers have full authority over the project without intervention from me, product owner. And finally, break a big project into one week to one month projects so you can make sure you are on course throughout. So Scrum is lightweight framework. It's not a methodology that doesn't take too much time away from production and has a relatively little overhead. Now, Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sunderland developed a Scrum 25 years ago. A Scrum guide is written and provided by them. And together they stand behind the Scrum guide. And you can find the latest Scrum guide in the resource section. So please read this guide several times. And this is your first step to success in Scrum. Scrum uses an approach that is both iterative and incremental. You never go very long before assessing where you are with the products. This enhances predictability and mitigates risk. And Scrum is based on the three pillars of Empiricism. Transparency, inspection and adaptation. But first let's look at transparency. Transparency means that everyone can see every part of the product development. And this visibility is accessible to both the people on the Scrum team and stakeholders. An important part of transparency is agreeing on common standards for product development. This means agreeing on common terminology to use throughout development and agreeing on what it means for a feature to be done. Now let's take a look at inspection. Scrum encourages frequent inspection of work products and progress to detect undesirable deviation from expectations. I like Ken Schwaber's quote. Scrum is like your mother-in-law, it points out all your faults, and it's so true. Developers are sometimes hesitant to adopt Scrum because it's point out everything they're not doing right. These inspections should happen frequently, but not so frequent that they get in the way of the development tasks. And finally, let's take a look at adoption. But during an inspection, when someone finds that the product development is starting to stray from the vision, the team must adjust and adapt to prevent further devi deviations. And Scrum outlines four specific techniques for inspection and adaptation. And they are sprint planning, daily Scrum, sprint review, and sprint retrospective. First, let's take a look at how Scrum compares to the older alternative of waterfall development. Waterfall typically goes through a lengthy planning process, which could take several months, followed by building the product, which again could take many months, and then testing the product, reviewing and eventually deploying the product. At this point, you may end up bringing the wrong product to market if market demand or technology has changed since the original plan was developed. There are several problems with this method. First of all, the planning must be completed before any work begins. And in most cases, the planning is done without entirely understanding the project. Once development is being done, oftentimes things get sent back to the planning phase and the project either needs to start over or the developers are just criticized for not understanding the plan. This cycle can happen many times. When development is done building the product, it gets thrown over the fence to test. Where, when problems are encountered, it bounces back to development and sometimes back to planning. The same issues occur in the next few steps with lots of backstepping and doing over. This can lead to lag times and many months to several years in order to get a product out the door. With Scrum, an implementation of Agile, the process is broken up into smaller pieces. First, we do just enough planning to get started with, building the minimal feature set. We build what was planned. Next, we test and review that small feature set and get it ready to ship. When that cycle is complete, we end up with a potentially shippable product. 
This process usually occurs in a time period of one to three weeks. This is then repeated time and time again, reducing the time from planning to development to testing. Each time through the planning process, we're doing just enough planning to complete the next incremental release. You end up with several incremental releases called sprints. A sprint usually takes from one to three weeks, and you just keep repeating these sprints until your product is feature complete. Sometimes you may end up shipping your product after the second sprint, or the third, or the fourth, or even further, but you eventually end up with a shipping product. In Scrum, there are three key roles that are needed for the framework to work well. First, the product owner. This is the person responsible for defining the features that are needed in the product. The product owner has the bright ideas that turn into products. The Scrum Master is a servant leader to the team, responsible for protecting the team and the process, running the meetings, and keeping things going. The team can be made up of developers, testers, writers, and anyone else that helps in building the product. Team members often play multiple roles. Some days developers may end up doing test, or testers may end up writing. Either way, the team works to get the product done. There are three artifacts or documents that are used in Scrum. Create a prioritized list of features known as user stories that could go into the product. This list evolves and changes priority with every sprint. User stories are a way of describing a feature set that follows the as a user I need something so that reason format. This way of phrasing a user story allows the product owner to specify the right amount of detail for the team to estimate the size of the task. The highest priority user stories go into the sprint backlog. These get estimated for size and are committed to for the next sprint. Burndown charts show the progress during a sprint on the completion of tasks in the sprint backlog. This chart should approach zero points as the work is being completed. There are three ceremonies that make up Scrum. Think of these as meetings or discussions. Sprint planning is where the product owner, scrum master, and team meet to discuss the user stories and estimate their relative sizes. The daily scrum is a brief stand-up meeting where the team discusses what they have completed since the previous meeting, what they're working on, and anything that might be blocked or need help. The sprint review and retrospective occurs at the end of the sprint. This is where the team demonstrates the completed work to the product owner, and then the team discusses what they can do to improve the process going forward. Let's bring it all together and take a look at the Scrum workflow. Start with the product backlog, which is where the product owner builds a list of the bright ideas and features that could go into the product. The product owner prioritizes the list and brings the top items to the team. Sprint planning is where the team, product owner, and Scrum master discuss the top priority user stories, determining what can go into the next sprint. The output from the sprint planning meeting is the sprint backlog. This is a list of user stories that have been committed to for the next sprint. The entire team and product owner have a solid understanding of what each of the user stories involves based on the discussions from the sprint planning meetings. The sprint is a one to three week time box where the work committed to in the sprint backlog is worked on through to completion. During the sprint, the daily scrum occurs as a stand-up meeting where the team discusses what they have completed and what they are working on, as well as any blocked items. The outcome of the sprint is a potentially shippable product. Potentially shippable means that the product owner can decide if it is ready to ship or if there are any additional features needed before it ships. At the end of the sprint, a sprint review and sprint retrospective meeting occurs. The sprint review is where the team showcases their work to the product owner and the retrospective is where the team works on what they can do to improve their process. Repeat this workflow for each sprint.